Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet the Fiona button scarf. For this project, you'll need a 9 millimeter end crochet hook. You'll need your yarn. You'll need scissors and a tapestry needle for weaving in the ends and doing your finish work. And you'll also need two buttons. The yarn I used was Lion Brand's Wool Ease Thick and Quick, and I used the fig colorway, that's the colorway shown here, and from the original scarf as well. And depending on the length you choose, this pattern has two lengths, you'll need one to two skeins of the solids. The solids are 106 yards each, and just as a side note, if you choose to use some of the prints and metallics that are out there, the yardage is a little bit shorter, so just when you're choosing your yarn, take that into account. The pattern has two sizes, a 45 inch length and a 60 inch length. So you'll need one skein for the 45 and two for the 60 inch. So we'll move our buttons out of the way. To begin our project, we'll put a slip knot on our hook. And we're going to be doing the shorter, smaller one today, the 45 inch length. The 45 inch length scarf has a starting chain of 124, and the 60 inch length has a chain of a starting chain of 154 chains. So because we're doing the smaller length, the 45 inch length, we will chain 124. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and pull it through the loop, just like that. It's one, two, three, four. So here is our starting chain. Again, we did 124 chains for the 45 inch length. And to begin our foundation row, I'll just move this back a little. It's kind of like starting an afghan, but much faster. To begin our foundation row, we're gonna work two double crochets in the fourth chain from the hook. This loop here doesn't count. So one, two, three, and four. In this chain right here, we'll work two double crochets. To make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert your hook into the chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. You should have one loop on your hook. Make one more double crochet in the same chain, like that, and then we're going to chain one, and I'll just get some more yarn off the here chain one, and then we'll skip two chains, one, two, and in the chain after that, we'll work two double crochet in the same chain. That's one, and two, and chain one. Skip two chains, one, two, in the next chain after that, work two double crochet, one, and two. So it'll start to look kind of like this. This is kind of a modified granny stripe, this pattern. Instead of three double crochets, though, it's two. So we'll just keep going across. Skip two chains, work two double crochets, chain one. We'll just keep doing this all the way across until we reach the end of our row here. So two double crochet, chain one. Skip two chains in the next chain, two double crochet, 
one and two, chain one, and we'll just keep doing this all the way across. So here we are coming up to the end of our row here, foundation row, and in the very last chain, you're going to work just one double crochet to finish off the row, just like that. So here is our foundation row in all of its lengthwise glory. It goes on and on and on, just like that. So to go into the next row, we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and turn our work. And then we'll work a double crochet chain one in each one of these spaces all the way across. So double crochet, double crochet into this first space, then chain one, then in the next space do the same thing double crochet, double crochet, chain one, and we'll keep doing that all the way across in all of these spaces. So here we are coming up to the end of the row. We just worked a double crochet, double crochet, chain one in each space all the way across and to finish off the row we're just going to work a double crochet in the turning chain space just like that so row one this was our foundation row and row one so that completes row one all the way across just like that and to finish off your Fiona button scarf you're just going to repeat this row that we just did four more times that gave me a total of approximately five inches if you'd like your scarf to be wider some people were asking um, just work more rows. The more rows you work, the wider it will get. And when you're finished, you can weave in the ends. And then I just use the same yarn to sew the buttons. These have pretty large buttonholes, but if you need to pull apart these plies here to get a little bit of a thinner strand to go through your buttonhole, you can easily pull those apart and use a smaller, narrower strand. And I always recommend before you sew your buttons on with your tapestry needle, this is the tapestry needle, to make sure the button will fit through the buttonhole. Make sure it passes easily, but make sure also that it's not too small because once you get your scarf buttoned, it won't stay attached and they'll, they'll kind of drop through there. And if they're too big, obviously they won't fit through the holes. So check those first prior to sewing those on. And this is a super, super fast scarf to work up in no time. And it makes a really good scarf for yourself or for a gift because you can wear it in a million different ways. I have lots of photos of how to wear it on the pattern page on the Fiberflux blog. You can button it and wear it like an infinity scarf. You can leave it unbuttoned and wear it as a traditional scarf. You can wrap it around your neck a few times and button it to make a nice um, bulky cowl. So this concludes the Fiona button scarf. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks so much for watching.